Polo match here in Naples at Pusina Scandoni. And the final appearance for these two teams. It's the bronze medal playoff between Canada and the Russian Federation. Hello and welcome again to Pesciona, Peschino uh, Scandoni. And tonight we have two matches. The first of those will be this particular match between Canada and Russia for the bronze medal. And later on it will be the gold medal playoff. So the women's competition comes to an end tonight. Being introduced to the players both the Russians and the Canadians uh, played here last night as well in their respective semi-final matches and they were both beaten which means of course that's why they're here tonight playing for this bronze medal for the Russian Federation in the quarterfinals having finished second in group B behind Italy they beat China by 12 to 8 and then lost to Hungary 14 to 16 in their semi-final yesterday. In the red, of course, it's the team from Canada. They were second in their group behind Hungary. They beat the USA in a classic match, 10 to 9, but then found the going too tough against the Italians and were beaten by 7 to 15. So if we were to look solely at their two teams matches against Italy who will play in the final a little later uh, the Russian Federation were beaten by just one goal to Italy by 8 to 9 uh, whereas the Canadians were beaten by 8 points at 15 to 7 and they just couldn't get into that game and as their coach afterwards Cyril Dorginia said we just weren't good enough against Italy tonight's another story from Italy and Hungary, the two match referees. The four officials there in the center. The players have all had a good warm up. He had Fisu Anthem before the match. Traditional pre-match ritual. Friendly little slaps at the moment. There'll be some that aren't quite so friendly as the game progresses. And the teams go to their respective dugouts the uh, Canadians as we view uh, on the left that's Cyril Tortinia and uh, Michel Roy with him the assistant coach and this is the lineup so Kelsey Jensen possibly starting although Rachel Jaffa hit was the preferred start last night PJ Allen wearing number two scored eight goals She's the leading scorer just behind Guivremont, who has nine. And there's uh, Sergei Marko, silver medalist at the Olympic Games in 1992 with his lineup, which has uh, Zaplatina, number three, and Pastina, number four, as their two top scorers at 13 and 14 goals, respectively. Respectively. Canada wearing... The white, so we have the goalkeepers with their red caps on. The huddle beforehand. The 
was a bit uh, Zeplat and uh, we saw there at number three played very impressively last night but they were just uh, not good enough in their semi-final against Hungary so there's the underwater camera in action already here for the women's match and we see them all marching out to the centre saluting the crowd So Jensen will be the start-off goalkeeper for Canada. And Kamreva, Kamreva for the opposition. And Blue, that's uh, the Russian Federation. just about ready to go in this bronze medal playoff the winner will stand up later and receive the bronze medal Canada against the Russian Federation waiting for the start signal and we'll have the first eight minutes of this match four quarters driving out on the sprint for Canada is Ava Morant but the Russians get it first first little tick of the box there for the team wearing blue that's the Russian Federation and Agamova pushing it out to the right. Popova. Oh, nice little lob. Straight over the keeper. Well, it's uh, actually Rachel Jaff. You see there, she's wearing the number 13. So initially we were given the indication that Jensen would start but it's Rachel Jaff so 1-0 already for the Russian Federation The steal there under pressure, Canada. And here's a quick breakout and another easy little lob, giving Jaff no chance whatsoever. 2 0 to the Russian Federation. It came from a steal down the far end where well, Carroll lost control and very quickly it was in the hands of Kempf. Down the other end, 2-0. Oh, well read by the Russian defence again. So another steal. Nogomova. Wide ball to Pastina. Takes it up to the two and pops it in. Wow. This is looking a bit scary for Canada. Three goals in less than three minutes. Three goals in a minute 41. That's how long it's taken the Russian Federation. A quick shuffle rotation of the uh, Canadian team. It's 
better and doesn't quite go. The deflection by the keeper just stopped the ball in its tracks. And now the dribble brought up now by the uh, Russian Federation. Zaplatina. Popova back to Zaplatina. Popova again. That was Inogamova. And there's another. Oh, they're just coming at will now. Four nil. Pistina. Canada have been unable to get out of first gear. They've had uh, three steals against them. They call for a timeout. <laughs> Are those hands out saying, what are we doing here? Dundinha, some pensive looking faces there, shell shocked. See the uh, Canadians have changed their keeper now. Jensen is there. Well, the timeout has worked because all of a sudden there's a goal for Canada. Rojas, Valeria Rojas. Jensen gets a hand to it, pushes it away, but they don't retain possession. And they're looking threatening again. Olimpsianova. <laughs> Long ball directly to Pistina. And there's an exclusion on number five, McDowell, for Canada. Kelsey Jensen getting the same sort of treatment as Rachel Jaff did in the first couple of minutes. It's Another goal for the Russian Federation. 6-1. And not yet 
five minutes gone on the first quarter. That's uh, Brianna Utas. Gives it to Erica Hardy. Bringing the changes. Utas again. Hardy. Oh. What some of the crowds calling it was a goal. The referees say no. with that shot that hit the bar bounced back in favour of Canada now they have Hardy well it was a reasonable pass and uh, Utah's indicating she was well held and couldn't get anywhere with that Oh, just delayed it too long. Was looking for somewhere to pass to, but it was open for Rojas. But she just delayed too long, and so now we see the Blue Caps swarm up to the Canadian goal, and it's just pushed past the keeper by Kemp. And another goal for this dominant Russian team. They lead by 7-1 to one with still two minutes to go in the first quarter. Vermont, the top scorer in this Canadian team. She's now backtracking with the rest of her team as the Russian Federation get a possession. Quick steal from them. Turned around a defense into attack very quickly. Diachenko. on him over another one off the bar that's two in successive shots off the bar for the Russian Federation the block and save by Kelsey Jensen that time Penalty call against Canada. Oh, Pestina comes up to the mark, but doesn't create the extra point. They lead by seven to one. Now a chance for Canada on the quick break.
it's a classic example of what happens underneath the water. The referees pick up some of it. We've got a big lead for this Russian team by seven to one. So seven to one, seven from 13 shots at goal. Canada one from four. Extra player shots. Well, the Russian Federation have had two and have scored them both. Six steals. That says a lot. Often we've seen Canada getting on attack and then all of a sudden having to rush back in defense because they've lost position. First quarter's gone and the Russian Federation driving on towards the bronze medal and the women's water polo leading by seven to one. to be Diachenko against McDowell, the two number fives in the sprint to get the ball. And there they go. Diachenko looks to have the edge. She's there. Flicks it back to the Russian side. Taken by Popova. Work defensively by the Canadians. They grab a steal. Rojas dribbles it up just to the right into McDowell. Rojas again. And that's Allen, PJ Allen. Oh, might have lost it here. They have, so that's another turnover. We mentioned the turnover statistics at half time. Really favoring the Russian Federation. Six turnovers, that's a seven now. Alan just pops it back to Jensen. McDowell finds Allen. Or drops it in to the hole, but fortunately for Canada, the whistle goes their way. The foul is against uh, the Russian Federation. Allen once more. McDowell over to Rojas. Almost out of frustration, but also with the clock running right down, Peggy Allen, PJ Allen, fires a bounce shot, which creates nothing. And 7-1, six minutes gone. Uh, six minutes to go in the second quarter. Taken a while, but that's the first goal of the second quarter after two minutes. The 
Russian team wearing the blue. That's uh, Pauline Kempf. Back to where they were now, Canada. Barcock. Just as they were against Italy, unable to create much from the centre spot. The uh, Russian defence is very good at smothering the Canadians in there. If all their shots have got to come from the outside. Good reaction, Jensen. Outright it goes where Theresa Bacock has the ball. Almost through under the arm of the keeper, but eventually not. And it's a breakout again by the Russian Federation. And another goal for them. 9-1. Diachenko. Diachenko studies at Leningrad State University. big battle there for Alexander Massier, the captain of Canada. There were three on to her. She gets good result for her efforts. Miriam Lazotte. Zaplatina moves up steadily. Now she has a go and puts it in. The so two passes went to Inog Amova. Zaplatina. And then we have the goal here, which gives the Russians a really ad advantageous lead. They are up by 10 to 2.
Three minutes to go in the second quarter. We haven't yet reached half time, and it's 10 2, an eight goal advantage to the Russians in this bronze medal playoff against Canada. They were three goals up after about a minute 40. Uh, Canadians have not been able to stem the flow at all. man up now and don't take advantage of it Really hard to see what Canada can do about it. As their coach said last night, uh, Dorginia, after their loss to Italy, said we just weren't good enough. And it just uh, appears to be the same tonight. The Russians having too many advantages all through their team. As soon as a Canadian gets the ball, there's a Russian player right in their face apart from then, and there was an opportunity. I think that was Morant. Oh no, mate, yeah, Morant or McDowell having the shot. Now they're back down the other end. Well done by Kelsey Jensen to get that rebound eventually. Again with Rojas and Guivremont on the right side. McDowell unable to control. Still with Canada, looking for the lob over the top. She's having a good tussle. Kelsey Jensen, that's twice now. She's beaten off the Russian attack. 10 to the score. This is the bronze medal match.
Galimzi Arnava, that's her in the blue cap and for Canada it's Lizotte and it's Galimzi Arnava who wins it and immediately straight up into the two meter area go the Russian Federation they keep possession and fire in a shot within the first four, 15 seconds of play in this third quarter that's a beaut ball straight across you is out of the water treading high and putting the ball into the cage the back of the net another goal 11 to 2 Patience pays dividends. Guivramont. So 3-11 now, each side has scored a goal in this third quarter. Make that two for the Russian Federation. Zaplatina. South Ural Institute of Management. Massia, the number 12, moves into the centre spot for Canada. She's rugged. She earned a penalty the last time she was there, but won't get the chance this time. This is a steal by the Russian Federation. It ends in another goal. Three players out for Canada, three come in, a couple for Russia, rotation being used. Good centre shot goal from Kempf. Morent. Back it goes. They were quite patient for their last goal and there's a punch in the air, a punch of triumph there for Carol. 18-year-old from the College de Maisonneuve in Montreal. Doubled their score in this third quarter. 13 points to four. Following this match, it'll be the big final. That's Hungary against Italy.
Canada now bring it out down the right. Lazot goes into the centre. Along with her is Rojas. Can they conjure up something here? Bounce shot tried, not successful. That came from Carroll. And now there's a breakout by the Russian Federation. Pistina just calmly she passes it out to her left and the shot in Ogamova in Ogamova makes it another 14 to 4 10 goal advantage Canadians inflicted a 23 to 8 loss to the Czech Republic so a big 15 point margin there but they were beaten by Hungary but 16 to 7 and then Italy last night 15 to 7 oh good recovery Morant Ava Morant gets one in for the Canadians 14 to 5 got a couple of 18 year olds and a 19 year old in this team the Canadian side and so too the Russian Federation with one two Two 18 year olds and three 19 year olds. Just lobs that over. And Jeff got a hand to it. I don't think she helped it in. But it was just nicely judged by the Russian number 10. Oh, she did get a finger to it, a couple of fingers. That was all. Safely in the back of the net. 15 to 5. Back to a 10 goal advantage. Lizot can see Massier in front, gets it to Massier, hoping for the backhand sweep, but she couldn't even get a hand to the ball, really. The Russians are all over her in the front. That's better. So Rojas in the right position, good timing. Seeing plenty of shots from underwater, which is uh, such a telling part of the game. And you can't see what's going on. You see a lot of splashing on top and arms going up and legs. And people look as though they're being dragged down. But you can't really see it from on top. But when you get those underwater cameras operating, you see exactly what's going on. Do a fast break. It doesn't quite go according to plan for the Russians. And PJ Allen just spotted the ball in time. So will he pick it up? Guivremont looking to lob. A finger got in the road. One of the Russian defenders goes over the crossbar. Now it's back with Russia. Pistina on the right.
of inaccuracy there from the Canadians and possession has turned the way of the Russians again. Ah, there it is. Backhand that she practices a lot in the warm-ups. Kemp. She slots in another one tonight. That's seven goals. Back to 10, 16-6. Counting down the seconds to the end of the third quarter. It's still been Russia's game right from the start. In fact, three goals in the first one minute and 40 seconds. And another one takes it out to 17 points to six. Kempf has eight of those goals. Good block by Mikhtaleva, number 11. And the keeper didn't have to worry about it. She was anticipating well. And Nogomova casually up to Mikhtaleva. Playing down the clock until the end of the third quarter. And 17 to 6. The bronze medal match. Not much that Canada can do about this. They're giving it their best shot, but really the team from the Russian Federation is a notch ahead of them tonight. Canada against the Russian Federation, 17-6 at three-quarter time. Russians have won all three sprints so far. No 
Nokomova. They lead the way again. Just gets there. Russia on attack immediately. Well, looking at some of the statistics at halftime, uh, Russia have scored 17 from 29 shots at goal. Canada 6 from 17. 11 steals. And we've noticed them, the Russian Federation, just getting onto loose pass or just applying pressure to the Canadians. So 11 steals and 5 out of 5 extra player shots for Russia. Look at what's happening in front of goalie. You sometimes while you're watching at home, and this is a one-sided match, uh, really, with uh, Russia a long way in front, just divert your eyes away to some of the little individual clashes out here as we see the Russian Federation putting in another goal. But it's what hap it's happening off the ball is quite intriguing. Galimziana, uh, she scores another, and... The Russian team go further into the lead. Eighteen six. Six and a half minutes to go in this bronze medal match between. Canada and the Russian Federation. It's the last appearance for these two teams at Piscina Scandoni in Naples. The women's water polo ends this evening. One more match after this. It's the gold medal match. defence by Canada, just an arm in the road and half a block a mad rush down to the other end where Canada will attack with the Russians working their way into another shot scenario block made by Utas Canadians have it waiting for the throw from Jaff who's back in goal Dow and to Utas. Right up. The keeper's got no chance here. In Nogamova.
can the Canadians get out of this? It's 17 to 6 at the moment. They haven't scored in this last couple of minutes. In fact, uh, what, six goals in the entire match? One on the first, one on the second. And then they got uh, four goals in the third quarter. Four minutes to go. There's a timeout called. Have a look at some of the little replays. Some of that vigorous action that we've seen from underwater as well. Canadian team call the timeout. Fortunately, the costumes are made of durable material. Otherwise, they'd be torn off. Guivremont. Lizotte. Back to Guivremont again, and Lizotte working it between the two of them. Here's Bakonk. Oh, and a nice goal. Scored by Rojas. 19-7. to Backhand was ideally suited for her. Lipskaya. She takes it up to 20 points to seven. Come on, Canada, get to 10 at least. Guivremont. With her as Hardy. Diachenko and Pistina. Pistina with the ball now. in the middle waiting for it in the center spot oh not needed did it go oh no didn't go over the both the referees were marching back hardy keeps possession the captain got no bounce off that. Christina again. She leads the attack down that right hand side again, and this bounce shot is successful. It's another one for the Russians. In Ogamova, she immediately goes out of play. Quick rotation. And into the action comes McTaleva. Canadians making a couple of changes as well. Under two minutes remaining.
It's 21 at the moment. Now it's 22 to 7. Have a look at the teams which featured in the medals two years ago. It was the USA winning gold, Hungary the silver, and Japan the bronze. And the year two years before, Australia won the gold from Canada and the Russian Federation. The gold medal will be decided later on this evening, and uh, that is the match between Italy and Hungary. It's almost full time here and the Russian Federation will be receiving the bronze medal a little bit later on. They've overwhelmed the Canadian team right from the start with three goals in the first uh, 140, one minute and 45 seconds. From that, Canada couldn't recover. They've been outclassed here in this playoff. 7-1 at the quarter time, 10-2 at half time, 17-6 at three quarter time, and it's now 22 to 7. Russian Federation now see the clock's got six seconds to go fire it way down the other end of the pool the Huda sounds and for Canada it's been a very tough night I've had two heavy losses they'll gain plenty from this experience and when they review this, they'll see that they really were outclassed by the Russian Federation tonight. The Russian Federation team will get the bronze medal, winning this match by 22 to 7. Thirty-nine shots at goal, twenty-two of them successful. Thirteen steals. Five extra player shots out of six. But it's what it says on the top of the board that really matters, and that is that the Russian Federation has beaten Canada by 22 to 7. They will be the bronze medalists at the 2019 Summer Universiade.